Hello everyone, in this video we are going to convert row score into percentile rank, standard score such as Z-score, T-score, and STA9 or standard 9. So the first column is the student, I have a total of 50, and then the second column is the row score, which is also a total of 50 row score. In this example, the highest score is student 4, that's 39 over 40, and the lowest score is student 10. That's 6 over 40. So let's start with converting it into percentile rank. For percentile rank, manual computation, we'll be utilizing this formula. 100 is multiplied to parenthesis i minus 0.5, where i is the rank in ascending order of the row score, and then divided by small n, which is the total number of row data. So if we say ascending order, the lowest score here will be ranked as first, and then the highest score would be ranked as the highest. Let's start showing the rank of this score. So let me insert a cell here, and let's name this as rank. And I'll be utilizing the rank formula of Excel. So this is equals rank, open parenthesis, and then let me click this cell. That would be the number that I'll be ranking in ascending order followed by a comma, and then highlight all this reference area or array of numbers. And after that, make sure that if we drag this formula, this array or reference will not move. So let's place a dollar sign before the letter and before the number. And then a comma. If I place zero, the rank will be arranged in descending order. And that's not what we want. What we want is ranking in ascending order, meaning the lowest score, 6, should be ranked as first, and then the highest score, 39, should be ranked as the highest. So close parenthesis, press enter, and let's drag the formula. All right, there you go. So as you can see, the lowest score is ranked first, and then the highest score is ranked as the highest. We are now ready to apply this percentile rank. So this will be equals 100% or let's just place 100 there times open parenthesis. This is our I value minus 0 0.5 close parenthesis divided by the total number of row data, which is 50. Press enter and we have 87 percentile rank. Let's remove the decimal value. So this is 87, read as 87. If we drag this formula, As you can see, the highest score has a percentile rank of 99th, and the lowest score has a percentile rank of 1st. So what does this mean? For the interpretation, we always interpret this as, this is 99% of all the scores is below 39. If we have here 87th percentile rank, this is interpreted as 87% of all the scores is below the score 35 points. Okay, so this is the manual computation of percentile rank. For Excel computation, let me show that as well. Let's insert a cell and then let's utilize the percent rank formula. Open parenthesis and then let's just highlight all these scores. There you go. Let's go back to this area and then let's just make sure that when we copy this formula, this array or our reference will not move. So let's place a dollar sign before the letter and before the number. Followed by a comma and then let's click this score, the one that we are solving for its percentile rank. Then followed by a close parenthesis and then press enter. So this is in whole number. Let me convert this into two decimal place and then place a percent sign. There you go. Drag the formula. And let's just look at the highest score. So using Excel's formula, we have the most ideal computation or what we call the inclusive part of the computation, where it puts 100% to the highest score and 0% to the lowest score. 
So as you notice as well, there is a very small discrepancy between the manual computation and the spreadsheet computation. Nevertheless, both can be utilized. So if you're using spreadsheet, you can simply make use of this percent rank formula. And then if you are doing the manual computation, you utilize this formula. So in my example, I would stick with the manual computation. Let me hide this part. So that is the percentile rank. We can also arrange this in ascending order. Let me show that. Let's uh, do sort and filter. Then sort largest to smallest so that we can see that student 4 is the highest, 39 over 40. The rank is 99. And then the lowest score is student 10. That's 6. The rank is 1% or first. So that's percentile rank. Now, as educators, aside from giving the actual row score, you can do this method of giving their score in percentile rank. In the national assessment test, scores are given in this way. Same with the national career assessment examination or the NCI. The scores are given in percentile rank. Okay, so let's move to Z-score. In Z-score, we now utilize this formula as X, which is the score, and then the mean. So X minus mean divided by S, which is the standard deviation. So in this case, we'll be needing the mean of the row score and the standard deviation of the row score. So let's do this in the bottom part. So let's compute mean. This is equals average open parenthesis and then let's just highlight all the entries or the row score and press enter so the mean now is exactly 23 let's convert this to two decimal place the standard deviation this is equals stdev.s so we are making use of that s as our sample and this is open parenthesis highlight all the entries to compute for the standard deviation press enter and we have 9.42 rounded off to two decimal place so since we have these values we can now compute for the z score so this is now equals open parenthesis this is our row score as 39 Minus, let's check that mean and standard deviation once again. The mean is 23. Close parenthesis divided by 9.42. Press enter. And the Z-score, let's just convert this to at least two decimal place. So that's 1.7. Drag the formula. And there you go. So notice that for Z-score, we have a positive and a negative score. So most teachers and students doesn't like to have a negative value because it connotes a negative impact on how they understand Z score. But the explanation of this is that if we have here a positive score, all positive scores are either equivalent to the mean or higher, and all negative scores are less than the mean. Take note that for Z-score, the mean and the standard deviation, the mean would be 0 and the standard deviation is 1. So that's how it becomes a standard score because as you can see, the mean is exactly 0 and the standard deviation is exactly 1. That is our Z-score. So aside from giving your students the row score, or in percentile rank or in Z-score, you can also do it in T-score. T-score is a lot better than Z-score because we are able to remove this negative sign. So to do this, for T-score, this is our formula, equals 10 multiplied to the value of our Z-score, click this part, plus 50, then press Enter. There you go. So we can convert this to a whole number. This is better if converted to a whole number. So if we drag the formula, this is now the t-score of the students. As you notice, uh, the mean here would be 50, and the standard deviation here would be 10.
So if we compute for the mean and the standard deviation, let me just show that. This equals average, open parenthesis, and highlight this set of score. The mean now is 50, exactly 50. And the standard deviation equals stdev.s, open parenthesis. This is 5, if I'm not mistaken, or 10 rather. There you go. So it's called standard score because the mean here is fixed, which is 50. It's always 50, and the standard deviation is always 10. So that is T-score. So aside from giving your students the row score, you can also give it in T-score. So we have Z-score, T-score, and finally, the standard 9 or sta 9, meaning all the scores will be converted from scores of 1 to 9. And the formula is very simple. It's 2 times the Z-score plus 5. So this is equals 2 multiplied to the Z-score plus 5, and then enter. And let's convert this to a whole number. There you go, and then drag the formula down. Okay, so if we compute for the mean and the standard deviation of sta 9, this is also standard. The mean is always 5 and the standard deviation is always 2. So for the interpretation of standard 9 or sta 9, all scores from 7 to 9 are interpreted as above average. So for the row score from 31 to 40, those are above average. And then followed by a score of 4 to 6, these are categorized as average. So in our example, the row score from 16 to 30, these are all average. And then below 4, that's from 1 to 3 in standard 9, these are categorized as below average. So there you go. We have the row score converted as percentile rank converted as Z-score, converted as standard score, and converted as standard 9. Again, standard scores are created this way, such that for Z-score, the mean is always 0 and the standard deviation is always 1. For T-score, the mean is always 50, standard deviation is always 10, and for standard 9, the mean is always 5, and the standard deviation is always 2. So these are all other ways of presenting the score of your students aside from giving them the row score. So if this video was helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one.